Hello, my name is Andrew Robinson, Director of Digital Content for Emotiva Audio. I'd like to welcome you all to the latest episode of our Home Theater 101 video series, where we will be detailing the setup, installation, and basic information surrounding integrating a 5.1 channel home theater system in your home. Let's get started. So, the basis behind any 5.1 or multi-channel home theater speaker system is very simple. It comes down to three key ingredients. Five independent loudspeakers plus one subwoofer, hence the point one. A multi-channel AV preamp or AV receiver. And in the event of using an AV preamp, a multi-channel power amplifier with which to drive our five loudspeakers. Setting up a 5.1 channel home theater system is surprisingly simple. You can do it in almost any room in your home, be it your living room, bedroom, family room, or maybe even a dedicated room which you have converted for the purposes of home theater viewing. Let's take this example for instance. Here is a typical rectangular living room. We have our television, seating, side tables, maybe even a coffee table for good measure. To start, we're going to want to place our left and right main loudspeakers. These can be floor standing, bookshelf, powered, non-powered, they can be whatever you need them to be. The left and right main loudspeakers typically flank your display, be it a projection screen or HD TV, directly below your display, but in line with your left and right main speakers is the center channel. One thing you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind is this. High frequencies tend to be a lot more directional than low frequencies. What we mean by this is that you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the tweeters, the high frequency driver of any loudspeaker, is roughly more or less in line with your seated ear height. So when sitting in your primary listening or viewing chair, the distance between your ear and the floor is going to want to be mirrored in the height or distance from your speaker's tweeter to the floor. Now, if you're using floor standing loudspeakers, you're going to want to make sure that your center channel's tweeter is in line, give or take a couple of inches maybe, with your floor standing speaker's tweeter. This is going to ensure a more seamless, coherent soundstage across the front of your room. The center channel is often horizontal and can be placed below or above your screen as your installation dictates, but if placed above, make sure you angle it downward so that it points directly at your listening position. With our front three speakers placed, now we must focus our attention on the surround channels. In a 5.1 system, your surround channels are not mounted or located behind you but rather to the side. For the best, most immersive surround sound experience, however, you're gonna to wanna to mount them higher up but angled downward at your primary listening position. Now, with all five speakers set up and placed in our room, the last remaining speaker is the subwoofer or the point one in a 5.1 configuration. We're gonna dedicate an entire video to how best to integrate a subwoofer in your home. But for now, let's just place it somewhere along our front wall, maybe in the upper left corner. Now with all of our speakers placed, we have a decision to make. Are we going to use an AV receiver, which features basically an AV preamp and multi-channel amplifier in a single space-saving chassis, or are we going to employ an AV preamp and separate five channel home theater amplifier? Either way, you will get the same multi-channel home theater performance, albeit with separates, you may get a little bit more performance, but if budget or space is tight, an AV receiver is a great way to go. Going off of an AV receiver, the only thing that we now have to worry about is connecting our five speakers and our subwoofer to the back panel of our AV receiver. We're going to take individual lengths of speaker cable, whatever lengths you need to route them from the speakers themselves to your AV receiver's location, and you're going to plug them into the AV receiver's speaker's binding posts accordingly. 
For example, our left front speaker needs to be connected to the left front speaker terminal on the back of our AV receiver. With all five speakers now connected, what we're gonna to wanna to do then is now connect our subwoofer. We're gonna to wanna to connect our subwoofer via an RCA or balanced interconnect to our AV receiver. Once that is connected, we can set all of the sub's internal settings like level, crossover point, and things of that nature either on the sub or in the AV receiver itself. We're gonna go over how to do this in a future episode, but for now, let's just leave the sub connected and move forward. Now, if you've chosen to use separates, i.e. an AV preamp with a separate outboard five-channel amplifier, the setup of such a system is largely the same as what we experienced with an AV receiver. The only difference being that we now have to connect our AV preamp using five analog interconnects to our multi-channel power amplifier. This is very simple as all we have to do is locate our AV preamps preamp outputs and match them using an analog audio cable to the corresponding inputs on the back of our five channel amplifier. For example, again, we take the left front preamp output and connect it to the left front input of our five channel amplifier. Our speakers connect to our multi-channel amplifier the same as they would in our AV receiver example. With our AV preamp and multi-channel amplifier now connected, we can connect our source components, DVD, CD player, or Blu-ray player, to our AV preamp and then route our AV preamp's video feed to our projector or HDTV. In future episodes, we're gonna go over how to fine tune this 5.1 channel home theater we've just set up in our living room or dedicated theater. But for now, I just wanted to go over the basics and show you how easy it was to get up and running in no time at all. Wanna know more? Visit us on the web at www.emotiva.com or write to me at andrew at emotiva.com.